welcome to the Traders Crib for Friday, November 3rd for our November free Friday webinar event, um, live day trading, where we are going to give you a little bit of a mini course on how I trade and how I see the chart on things that I think are important for new traders. And then, um, give you some mindset tips or just going into some as well as look at some fundamentals today of the news and what's going on and then trade this market together together <laughs> nothing really else to say I'm um, not trusting price too much this morning I usually I didn't catch this little pop run up for my more experienced traders in the house this morning um yeah I missed it and I was sitting here so don't ask me why I missed it because <laughs> I was I, was, I don't know. My instinct was off a little bit today. I do think we're going up, but it's like that slow up. I'm not really sure uh, where exactly we're going to stop. I have a few levels, but we'll get into that. All right. First and foremost, before we get started with anything, we're going to do the mindset before we get into the course. So today we'll do mindset, then course, then fundamentals, then trade. All right. Sounds good, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning to anyone who's just popping in here. We're going to get started with some mindset and we'll go from there. So today we're looking at our daily laws by Robert Greene. Okay. That's what the book that we're using for daily meditations. And today this book is uh, just for those of you who may not have this book, this book is sectioned into the days of the year <laughs> and each day of the year is given an affirmation or meditation that you can kind of, uh, sit with as it reflects to Robert Greene's other books on uh, the 48 Laws of Power, and the Laws of Human Nature. So all of it ties, all of those books tie into this book, which is why I want to present this book to our space because it kind of gives everything in one. But let's go for today. So November 3rd, it says, increase your reaction time. Re increase your reaction time. So the daily law here is to consider this like a resistance training. The longer you can resist reacting, the more mental space you have for actual reflection and the stronger your mind will become. Another reason why I talk about this book because it applies directly to trading in every way, like every way, okay? Um, as you all, some of you know me and you guys are like, Randy's always telling us to push the button because you do need to push the button. You need to like trust your instinct and like take action. But then at the same time, you have to control your impulses or that little devil on your shoulder is telling you when you shouldn't be hitting the button and you hit it anyway. Like all of that. Katrina, the name of the book is The Daily Laws. The Daily Laws by Robert Greene. Robert Greene is the guy who wrote 48 Laws of Power and the Laws of Human Nature. Cool. <laughs> no worries. So that's what we're, what we're all talking about um, today and where our mind says to be. So we have to master our emotional self, right? And that's another thing that in the laws of human nature that Robert Greene uh, talks about is mastering your emotional self. So as much as you need to trust your instincts and be able to imply an impulse reaction, you need to be able to hold against other impulsive reactions in order to sustain right uh, a successful probability in this in this trading game at least i'll apply it to trading because that's what we're here for today all right so take a step back sometimes before you click the button make sure you have checked all of your your little convictions with your trading plan right and then proceed from there okay so that's my set for this morning daily laws let's get into it today is going to be a fun trading day because it's going to be complex <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go over how I'm viewing that. All right. Next up is fundamentals. Uh, whoo, I said, of course, didn't I? I'm so used to doing my fundamentals on my trading class, y'all. Give me a minute. Let's do the course and then we'll get into fundamentals. Go from fundamentals into trading. So I am sorry. Back up and pull up my presentation. Mm -mm. Okay. The brain can go here and do it. All right. Cool. So this morning we're going to do a little mini course into uh, candlestick chart patterns. I want to 
have you all begin looking at the whole chart and not just focus on like a, like one or two or three candles, but like a multiple of candles, like 10 plus candles and understand what is 10 candles telling me, all right? Because 10 candles is going to tell you more than three, <laughs> right? It's just, it's just kind of like as simple as writing a sentence, right? If you have short sentence, you don't have as much data versus if you write a paragraph, like it's, it just becomes that simple. So we're going to be looking at some of the top, most profitable candlestick chart patterns that I think will help all the traders, <laughs> okay? So it is, these are the top ones, these are the most common ones, some of you already know them, but at the same time, I believe that um, trading these patterns will yield your best like targets uh, as far as take profit targets, your best stop losses, right? You can base all of that off of these chart patterns and they'll make your trades overall more successful and more profitable, all right? So today we're going over five of them, double top, double bottom, five, you know, every candle pattern has an inverse. So the double tops and the double bottoms, the triple tops and triple bottoms, the flags and pennants, right? head and shoulder pattern and cup with handle. If you've never heard any of those terms before, that is cool. You're going to learn today, right? So let's get into it. So first, let's talk about what, a can, what are candlestick chart patterns. So when you Google, you're going to find a, di a different definition than how I'm defining it here. So this is Randy's A Trader's Crib way of differentiating between a candle, just a candlestick pattern. So when I say candlestick pattern, I'm talking about your bullish engulfing, your two to three candlestick patterns, right? When I say candlestick chart pattern, I'm talking about like five to eight candles or more. All right, so that's the difference for me. So it's going to be like a group of these candles coming together to form complex patterns on the chart that resemble like everyday shapes. So like a double top, for example, forms an M. Everybody knows what an M looks like. Great, we're good. So while the double bottom forms a W, everybody knows what a W looks like. We're great. So it becomes these common shapes that you know of are going to like draw themselves on the chart and form chart patterns. All right, we good. Y'all following me? I ain't lose anybody on terminology, did I? Good, 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 good. All right. So that's my distinction. If you Google that, you're going to get something else. Just let it be known, <laughs> okay? So first up, we got double tops and bottoms, all right? Double tops and double bottoms. So what are double tops and double bottoms? For the most part, they're your Ws and your Ms. They're when price hits up against a level of, uh, for instance, the double, we'll start with the double bottom. So for the double bottom, price will hit a level of support twice and make two distinct like troughs or trenches right down there. So price came down, hit a certain level of support, bounced back up, said psych your mind, came, bounced back up a little bit. So that's what the psych your mind comes in at. Then comes back down to that same level that it previously tested of support, makes an even level bottom, right? As you can see here. And then eventually comes back up to the top and breaks the previous high um, from when it first short ran up and then continues to break the previous, previous high, if that makes sense. Um, and we'll have this nice W and price will just continue running up. So it is a double bottom is considered a bullish pattern. We're expecting price to go up when we see it. A double top is going to be the inverse, which is going to be an M. And it's going to be a bearish pattern with those two peaks at the top, like a two mountain peak, right? Um, and price was going to break through that same neckline and go down. All right. Very simple. But it's not nothing complicated. Triple tops. What's a double top? Double top has two big, well, triple tops has three. Let's keep it simple. All right. So we got triple tops, bearish, but triple top is going to be a bearish pattern where you're going to have three peaks at the top and then price is going to break down that neckline. And then the triple bottom is the inverse of that where you're going to have three like trenches or troughs at the bottom. And then price is going to break out that neckline to the top side, give you a bullish pattern for the triple bottom and a bearish pattern for the triple top. All right. I trade these all the time, y'all. Like when I say like every day, like every day. <laughs> so that's what I rely on most. Flags and pennants. Just like, because they made a flag this morning, right? We had a nice flag overnight and then price broke up. So we're going to go over that. But flags and pennants, right? Flags and pennants are continuation patterns, not really reversals. So your double tops and your double bottoms are going to be, and your triple tops and your triple bottoms are going to be reversal patterns, right? They're going to show that price 
It was like coming down to a certain level. And now it's turning around and coming up. It's a true reversal, all right? With pennants and flags, you're going to be pauses in continuation. So price is going to be short trend. Say, for instance, price is trending up. Price is going to pause by giving you a bunch of small candles going sideways for a little bit. And then it's going to break out and continue that upward trend or the downward trend if it's, you know, a bearish market. So I love these pennants because they can really kind of give you an idea of, you know, that, con that extra conviction of where price is going to go to next because you just saw it leave like an upward trend and then now price is stalling and you're like, oh, well, I see I have more room for it to run. So it's probably going to run up. Makes it really, really easy. And we'll go over it because the chart just did it. So we have a perfect example. Uh, head and shoulders. All right. You got to love how elementary school comes back and haunts us in our older years. So head, shoulders, knees and toes. But we're going to talk about the charts. And it's a chart formation with three peaks where the two outside peaks are of lower and equal height than the middle peak, which is the highest. So, you know, head and then your shoulders. <laughs> right? Like, you got to, okay? It's just simple. So they form on the chart. And it's, again, similar to the double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms, because they're going to, you know, kind of bounce off this level of support or resistance, depending on which way the trend is going. They're going to meet a neckline. And then by the third retest, price should most likely break that neckline, right? Three times the charm is an old saying, and it usually applies to the market. Emphasis on the usually, because the market is always in probability, so it doesn't always do what we want it to do. But there you have it, head and shoulders, tops and bottoms, all right? And then next, we have the infamous cup with handle or cup and handle, either or is applicable, all right? Because my presentation has both. Um, <laughs> so you could know that either or is applicable. So a cup and handle, all right? A lot of times for those of you who trade with me daily, you guys know I speak of a cradle a lot. Um, and usually that's when price is kind of doing a reversal as well. Price kind of came down and it's like doing this cradle dip turnaround and it's kind of coming up and, and it continues, right? It's just kind of a swoop. And I'll talk about that um, a lot. And I love that pattern because usually price is going up. So that would be the cup part, that cradle, all right? The cradle by itself is considered a cradle. It's considered a cup and handle. If price then comes up out of that cradle shape, then kind of dips back down just a little bit at the neckline shoulder and then breaks up. So you'll get this, this pattern right here where price kind of comes down a little bit or uh, retraces a little bit before continuing up. That's the handle. So if we were to draw this as a whole like little mug, you guys should hopefully be able to envision. But if I see one on a chart, I'll draw it for you. But if you were to draw like a U here and put a little circle, make it a mug, and then put your little your little circle on the end, make it a, a handle, cup and handle, bullish pattern. Universal, but you can get an inverse of this going the other way. I didn't put both examples here on a cup and handle, but you can get the opposite direction for price to come down, which would be an inverted cup and handle. All right, cool. Any questions on those very basic, the very important profitable candlestick patterns because they show up everywhere. I can go back to the slide if you need me to. Cup and handle from <laughs> British folks. <laughs> This is you're hilarious. I mean, I can't really argue with that one. <laughs> Sip your tea and make your money. All right. <laughs> so gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. So here's a chart. Um, I do price is kind of inching up slowly, but we'll see here. So let's go into fundamentals and see why we have this pattern forming on the chart. So today, looking at Forex Factory, we had 830 red folders. Um, and it was the average hourly earnings, the non-farm employment change, and the unemployment rate, right? Uh, these three folders came out this morning, and the data was kind of like, uh... <laughs> all right, so overall, you know, our unemployment change came down, and then our unemployment rate went up, and then it's like, okay, so we we're kind of, you know, a little jaded. We popped up a little bit. Great, but... Um, Overall, do I think we'll continue going up? Yes. Do I think today's candle may be a little uh, less easier to trade than yesterday's candle? Yes, <laughs> because it's the end of the week. 
Um, and we're running right into that big order block, but uh, we're going to make it work and I'm going to show you how. So next up for news, oh, we do have 10, let me go back. We do have 10 o'clock news, which is why I think price is stalling at the moment <laughs> because we do have ISM services PMI at 10 a.m. after the bell rings. So that will most likely, um, you know, finally set the market in whatever direction it may want to do for the day. All right, moving over to CNBC, we have uh, everything green this morning as that 8.30 news kind of popped the market up for us. We were already in an upward trend from this week anyway. So everything is up, down, S&P and NASDAQ. And the headline news for CNBC is U.S. pays will increase by 150,000 in October, less than expected. And then Dow Futures at 100 points after soft jobs report sends yields lower. So I wasn't sure if we want to like pull back a little bit, like we want to do a deeper like retracement move today and kind of not be as long as candles yesterday. Like yesterday gave like no retracements. Yesterday just ran, uh, which we love those days. But days that it gives a, a stronger pullback, it's going to take some patience and some weight on you to stay to stick to your conviction on the direction. And that's going to be the hardest thing to do because uh, short candles tend to psych you out and make you want to take your position out early. And that's just the psychology behind it. Um, moving over to Benzinga, though, we have U.S. labor market show signs of softening. October non-farm payrolls decline to 150,000 below estimates. So Benzinga is, and, you know, CNBC are both um, highlighting the same headline news this morning when it comes to the red factor, red folders on foreign factories. And um, now we just need to look and see what this data is... Uh, doing for us in the market because we always want to trust the chart we want to get an idea of the news but we don't want to absorb the news right and for today i want to just review fear and greed index because it's been in fear like most of the week um and we'll look at it again now we're still in fear so <laughs> um but i just want to bring this up to you guys so if you ever are in doubt or have need some additional conviction as to where the market potentially could be going. You could use this, but again, don't absorb it because as much as it's been in fear, the market has been going up, not down. So, and that's because we're in like a nice pullback um, to retest an order block, okay? So just keep that in mind. But overall, we're fear, overall market fear, stock price breath, extreme fear, stock, um, strength and breath, extreme fear. Uh, put and call options, fear, market volatility, neutral, safe haven demand, fear, everything just down the line. It's just nothing but fear. So, you know, you can always keep this in mind. Of course, when things are in extreme greed, we're usually in a stronger bull market, right? So it's just another resource to use to help give you a bit of conviction to your trades. Now, as we're looking at the market kind of push up here, so now I was in futures, I got out because it started to slow and I'm like, what are you trying to do? So I said, I'll focus on my course for you guys this morning and then we'll just get in together and I'll just sit out and <laughs> stop giving back like $5 to the market trying to figure it out and being a little nervous about it. All right, let's do a top down analysis from the weekly. This is the end of the week, but I want to show you what this week has done so far. I am going to remove Fibonacci for the moment so it won't confuse a lot of you because I know I have a lot of lines on this chart. Most of them I did label. Um, and most of them I can get rid of. So let me clean, do a quick cleanup for you guys of these smaller lines. And let's look at the big picture that is still there. Because uh, these are just alerts. And I'll finally put them back and we'll do it together for the day. All right. So <clears throat> this this is how I started my chart this week, okay, for the week, all right? And uh, I had all these fair value gaps and order blocks and things like that, like, you know, lined off. And so this is the chart for the week. So as you can see, we had a nice, we have a nice little order block. This is an order block, are my cluster of candles, right? These four, one, two, three, I would say three, and then the four candles, the breakout candles, the downside. So these three candles are right here is my order block from the weekly perspective. Again, we know that price likes to move or be pulled from order block to order block and through fair value gaps to get to those order blocks, right? That's what it does. So the fact that I saw a weekly uh, order block 
And then once Price gave me the conviction somewhere on the daily that Price was turning around, um, I was convinced that we would run up and I was able to hold my conviction a lot better because of this nice order block sitting right here. We also have a fair, a weekly fair value gap just on the other side of that order block, which also gave me another level of conviction that price is going to continue to be pulled, not just to the order block, but maybe even through to test the opening of this larger fair value gap that is shaded in red on the chart. Is everybody following that? Does that make sense? <laughs> nothing, nothing rocket science here. All right. Um, so I do believe that we can still come up where we have closed, you know, the order block. And that's where I had this weekly order block close right here. This is where I was expecting price to come potentially overnight and do it. And it decided to do a, something else, just stall sideways all night and then pop up just now. Um, so it closed it. So that was my last little 20 handles I was going to catch, but that's fine. So now I'm kind of struggling to look for where my next 20 is going to be. Um, because this was the first 20 here from where price um, where price was at around like 8 a.m., which was like 43.35. And then it popped up, right, by 8.35. So, or 8.45, I would say. Um, okay, so this is where we're at. So now can we, if we measure from here to here, there's like 20 handles just to test the weekly fair value gap open, right? Roughly. And of course we could, you know, this is still this candle. So we're not gonna, we could pull back some and we may not make it there. It's my only concern. We just may not make it there um, because this is the current candle that we're in. So I'm not expecting like a pullback because we're in that candle. So now when I come down to the daily time frames, it's like, okay, I need more information. So we're right up here into, again, now we're in the daily order block. And my other conviction, the reason why I have faith that we can come up to test this 4384, especially now that we're kind of in this wick, is that usually when price comes to clear an order block, it will at first at least try its best to make it, I mean, I add initial bias, let me take this one. It will try to make it to the close of this, candle where the candle broke out of the order block so here's your pin here's your cluster of candles here's the pin october 17th here's the breakout october 18th right price will usually come and test the close of that breakout candle whoops um at the top here in this case it tend to be the open of that candle because of, but the body is my point all right so it'll come all the way up here. If it comes up here, that'll be 43.98, which will be breaking through that 43.84, which is my opening of the weekly fair value gap. You see how all that aligns? It's like right there. Like and when I charted my weekly, it's so close to that daily. It's like, okay, well, price will most likely do that, right? And we could do that for today and close that out. And then, which, because it's moving, I'm going to jump back in the future. <laughs> so... Um, because this thing has been driving me nuts all day. So let me drop down to 15 seconds. Give me a second, y'all. Just look at it. So here, here we go. And this is why I'm going to take a pause and just set this order right quick. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs> like I want to, I want to make sure I go over all of it with you, but I also need to make my money in the meantime. Right. Uh, y'all can't be mad at me for that. Okay. So <laughs> let's do this thing. So, um, so I did just enter futures going up. I plan to hold it to 43.84 um, if I can, because now that I've dropped to the two hours since now that I just entered, I want to check and see what it's doing. So price did a bunch of flags yesterday, but this is the main flag that it did last night. This is a flag or and or a pennant. It's just how the flag, they're still, they're both flags. It's just about what shape the flag actually is, right? So the pole is the pole. And then like your flag is either going to be like a box or you're going to do a triangle, which is the pennant, right? <laughs> or it's going to be like a streamer. Like, I mean, they don't call it that in the market, a streamer, but like, I'm trying to just have, help you guys identify common shapes that you know of in the world that will help you with these candlestick patterns. It's nothing crazy. Like y'all can see it, right? This is a flag. Boom, right here. Pole, flag waving in the wind continuation to the upside perfect example today of a flag that I said that was here so we also have came right up to this previous order block 
We are clearing that order block. We are going to the next one, the larger one, right? We're right now running up this wick. So I I'll, wouldn't be surprised if price chooses to do a little juke action at 43.66 because it's two hour wick. Um, and then it's the close of this candle back here, and then it'll do a little jerk action, and then it eventually should continue to come up, right? Because of what we saw in the daily, right? Come here, sorry. So look at that. That's right at that wick, that 4366. That's a daily wick. So we're gonna do a little juke, and then we're gonna figure out if we can finish out this candle because we we almost finished it yesterday. We didn't finish. I, I wanted to try to get here. And I was jumping in and I gave back, I think, like $25 yesterday trying to do this stupid ass move at the end of the day. Y'all leave me alone. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> because y'all saw what it was doing. Like, I knew it could, I knew we still had this to go. And it was a matter of like, are we going to do this overnight or are we going to do this like fully tomorrow once the market opens? I will go live tomorrow once the market opens. But um, now that I see it, but I was kind of stuck between that. Like I knew we were going up. It was just like, how and when are you doing the move? Do I have an overnight trade or do I just need to sit on my hands and wait? Okay, Randy, well, you tried last night, you got in, you made $10 and then you recognize you need to sit on your hands and you need to wait. <laughs> so I did that. Um, and now that, that was my trade and that was like all I did really. And then I missed this morning and then so I'll come in this market and try to capture the rest of whatever run up is left. Um, I'm going to stick an alert right here at the 4366 just so I can see. I'm going to see how much of a violent pullback it may want to take because of 10 o'clock moves. All right. So I may get out right here and get back in because <laughs> I should have been holding this whole time. But I wasn't sure how it wanted to fight the weekly order block close. I just didn't know how I was going to do. I knew we still had a daily run up, but I didn't know what type of pullback, what type of vibe. Um, I knew could have known that it wasn't going to do too much of a significant pullback saying that the, the support level is just right here. Um, but I wanted to wait because I didn't want to get in too soon where I would have to wait for this to come back. And then I, like say if it dipped further into this 15 minute fair value gap, that's what I wanted to wait on. I wanted to wait to see just how far we'll pull back in here and then get in. And then now that we're just kind of breaking up against it, okay, well, I'll just go in for free. I hope that makes sense. All right, hope that makes sense. So that's the 4366 could be the first move while 4384 is like my overall target. Um, I don't know again what the swings are gonna look like today. Like as far as like it pulling back, coming back up, all of that jazz. Sometimes it could be violent, sometimes it could be smooth sailing not as violent it it all depends we got about less than a minute 20 seconds for this bell rings we know that spy is going to open with a gap so we know that which is also potentially will pull price down as well to want to refill the gap now from the spy perspective right it's deep in that order <laughs> and again i think it wants to finish finish through it and here's another reason is because you know the bell ring i'm just gonna sit in my trade uh is because of this let me change make this purple this gap let's make it a daily dash line okay at 438 you see how this gap was never fully filled like it was but it wasn't and it was just so choppy and so for it to clear the order block and potentially whip through there to like close it close it I could potentially see it doing that too, because we know that price will come down if we look back in time when it does come back for order block, it comes all the way through it for the most part. Um, especially one on the upside, because why we know price likes to be up more than down. So we know we have a we could have a better chance. It's still a probability, because if we're in a bear bear market, right, it won't come up completely. It just won't. It won't do it till a lot later, it may be months later. So we have to keep that in mind. And this is another reason why I'm always taking profit right at the breakout candle, because I'm always, I want to wait and see, are we really trying to break through it or are we just meeting the level to then now continue down on the bear, bear trend? And now we're going to make a new, another new low, or, you know, are we trying to break up through this? And, I, and you just have to wait because if you try to overshoot, you can risk losing a lot of your trade. 
you know, of your profits um, because of that. And I've done it, so don't do it. <laughs> keep that in mind. All right. Uh, so lots of things to look at as far as conviction goes, but take it in levels because that's usually the best way to keep my account green is I just kind of get out, get back in, get out, get back in, get out, get back in, and just solely just eat at levels. One of these days I'll sit through the whole damn thing, but um, right now, and I and I still know the move, and I still take at levels because I just want to be. It's just it's gaining that confidence more and more. Just level, just habitually taking the levels, just habitually taking the level. Then it's gonna be so easy to be like, ah, well, you know what? I know it's gonna do this at this level. I'll just set my alert now. I won't actually put a take profit or I'll just set the alert. Oh, okay, the alert's there. Oh, let me look at the chart. Oh, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, okay, I'm gonna just leave it. I'm done. <laughs> like I just need to check it so to make sure it's still sticking to the assignment. So um, I think I do recommend that level by level will help your confidence um, as a trader grow into what you need it to be and keep the account nice and green. And then you're able to easily manage your losses, right? Because um, because you're looking at each level and you're like, oh, well, if I'm scared, if you think it's going to go, well, you'll just get out right quick. You know, you can just, just management, capital management. All right. So uh, we have the futures pushing up here. I'm on the five minute now. So what I do is I'll glance at the five minute. I have to take a lot of discipline within myself. I have to stay on the five minute. As soon as I start to feel this thing of like, oh, Brandy, you're overanalyzing the five minute. I go, let me just set the 15 minute and I do this. <laughs> like I literally do this. I'm like, don't, don't press the button on five minute. Don't you do it. If the 15 minute ain't as clear as the five minute, if they're not all in alignment, my five minute and my 15 minute and my two hour, then you sit on your hands. You don't get faked out by that five minute and that three minute chart because it will do that. It will so do that. Um, and I've I've sat there and watched it like Ooh, what what pattern? Oh, it looks like it's oh it's curved. Oh, and then I just press the button. Just is is ridiculous so i'm not going to do just 15 minute and just just wait because <laughs> you got more time on the 15 minute candle um and this pattern is still looking very bullish right and even the the five minutes still look bullish so you really shouldn't have too much to worry about just yet as there's only 50 seconds left on this five minute candle and it still looks like it's holding the bullish pattern so this is what i mean by confluence across all time frames where my five minute looks bullish my 15 minute looks bullish, minute ugh, looks bullish, and then my two hours still looks bullish, right? So I want to see if it's going to kiss this line and get me out before 10 o'clock, because that's kind of what I'm just kind of looking at right now, so I don't want to risk it. I want to take a small little run up till 10 o'clock, see what the 10 o'clock news, and by all means, you can just wait till 10 o'clock. And then get in, but the 10 o'clock news could do one of two things. It could reverse price or it could continue price. <laughs> so if it reverse price, it's like, okay, I want to get out and then get back in. If it can, I mean, or get in on a turnaround or maybe wait to see what type of pattern it actually does. Um, if it continues though, this is a situation where you just, you will want like a runner, <laughs> like you will want to take profit and then like leave a runner to go up because then you would have been in at like, the start of it all and then you can really make your money right so like getting in now great that's perfect um but you would need a runner if you feel like this level is going to trip up and it's not going to give you 43.84 right away um trader's choice but you guys do what you will so that's the you know i'm more for your futures focus because futures easy i can just jump in like like a stock and just hold it let it run up and just get out and that's exactly what i'm doing i just bought uh justinia and i yesterday had a nice private little conversation so justinia i literally just bought the whole contract like a stock that's what i'm doing right now i'm not doing anything else i'm just letting it ride up and just get out and guess what no day trades have been used because it's futures <laughs> right so <laughs> Easy peasy. All right. Yes. Uh, Tanya, this is being recorded. I don't want to say Tanya, but I got to remember how you pronounce your name. Tanya, this is being recorded. And this will be because my free events are always on YouTube. So it'll be on YouTube and the website, but 
which are fully built. Um, so yeah, really easy. Like I showed, so this is how, let me show you guys quickly how I get into these future orders from the chain. So I, as some of you know, I am a Thinkorswim TD Ameritrade user, soon to be forced to Charles Schwab, but that's cool because I'm Charles Schwab user too. But anyway, uh, when I trade, I usually trading the micro. So when I come in here, I'm going to come to the trade tab. I'm going to come to my, uh, into this little box where I can change the ticker. Um, I have my watch list kind of set here. So I usually just click it. But if you want, you will type in backslash MES for the micro and ES for the many. The micro is cheaper. If you have at least $2,000 of capital, I would recommend the future, start trading futures because you have more time, especially if you're working a nine to five or still got a job, you have more time to execute your trades. Um, and then you have no day trades to worry about. So then all you need is two grand, okay? So uh, to get your account approved for futures. And then what I do is I just come right here to the, the whole number where price is trading and I just right click on it. And I'll either buy or sell depending on the direction. Um, I know Maria had disclosed, she usually enters with brackets or so she'll do a buy custom and she'll do a bracket. I don't know if she's still playing it that way, but I know at one point she did. So there's options here. All I'm doing is pointing out that you have live examples of options in this trader space uh, for you to lean on to and be like, well, what you? I don't do brackets. I don't like stop losses. They get on my nerves. So I use the single. I just press single and then I just jump in, confirm send. And then once my order has taken, I'll right click here, create closing order. I'll sell and I'll hit this, you know, put that sell order in at whatever target I'm looking to do, get at. And see where price goes. So price is jumping around, but as you can see, you don't make as much money with the micro as you would the mini. Because if this was um, the mini, this would be a hundred dollars, right? Or this would be you know uh, eighty eighty seven dollars, you know things like that. You are going to move the decimal place over to the right one of your in the futures. You're going to move it to the left one to go to micro. So um, that's the difference there. But overall. It becomes easier to hold because as you can see, if I'm only up $12, $13, and that means I'm only down that much, uh, playing the micro, uh, the capital it takes to trade it. So if I come back here and kind of go through the steps of placing the order, um, my buying power effect, this is what I'm looking at right down here in this small box that popped up. My buying power effect is $1,400, right? So $1,400 to trade the whole micro not the options, as you can see, there are options here and that's even less. So let's take a look. So if you were to go to the options, of course, I'm not gonna play the zero DTE, but let's say we go four days out. And on the four days out, we're gonna play the micro options and the, all the options rules apply as far as getting assigned, as far as uh, expiration dates go, as far as all that jazz, okay? That doesn't change, it's just future. So you don't have a day trade to worry about and you have more time to execute the trade or close out. So what you're going to do is uh, it, price going up. So you're going to buy a call, buy in the money. And I just want to point out, again, buying power effect, the capital required to enter these trades. So you will confirm send. And if you were to play options on the micro futures, options on the micro futures, your buying power effect is $138. Very, very, very cheap. But please don't think you're going to make hundreds of dollars trading $138 because you're not, all right? You're going to make, you know, five, 10, <laughs> whatever on the trade, but it it works. For less capital management, you'll still get it, it take advantage of the move. Now, if you were to play the ES, you can do the same thing, but to play the ES as a whole, the big boy, though, you're going to call it the big boy for a reason, but see why. So if I buy the whole con the whole ES, the whole thing, and I want to trade it like a stock, and like I just did, buy, right click, buy, single, the order's down here, now confirm and send. All right, my buying power effect, I need 14 grand, right? 14 grand to trade this, uh, to take this one futures contract. But again, I'm going to make $50 every $1 futures make. So it's great. It's really easy to make like $3,000 a day on the futures but the point is it takes a lot of buying power now you won't lose i will hope that you have more discipline to not let this amount of money even if you do have it to just be eaten away from you <laughs> in one trade but um 
but that is the risk that you're putting on the line. And then if you were to trade the options on it, which you can do as well, this is Tans is not in the house today, but this is Tans' strategy. All right. Um, she's traveling the world. Oh, just made money. Okay. <laughs> Gotta love that. So that's why that's why you put take profit order in. So anyway, um, futures. So if you want to do the options on it, so we'll go four days out. We'll do a call on the big boy. All right. So again, if you have two thousand dollars of capital, though, you can trade the futures options. You may not be able to trade the whole contract, but you can trade the options because the buying power effect is. $1,300 for one options contract. And at the same time, you still get to benefit and eat from the $50 for every $1 move, but with an options contract. So now you can really make your guap, right? With less capital playing a big boy and you don't need $14,000. So if you have an account, I wouldn't recommend doing this with just two grand though. Um, the, the micro I can because like even though that much buying power is there, the way it moves and how much money you're gonna lose, you're not gonna eat all that up. But I wouldn't take that risk like that. But um, five thousand dollar accounts, anybody? I would do. I would trade the futures, the big, the mini futures options with at least five thousand in an account. Easy, especially if you know the move. Get in, get out, be done. Okay, so Barbara, perfect question. So. What expiration date do I choose? When it comes to the futures, as you can see, you don't see a date like you do on, let's go to SPY. Let's do a comparison. All right, here's SPY, right? You see November 3rd, November 6th, November 7th, November 8th, blah, blah, blah. And then you see the number of days to expiration in parentheses. That, it holds true for the futures, at least the parentheses part, not the day because you got to remember it's not going the reason why it can't give you like a october or november 3rd or november 6th whatever it can't give you those dates is because the futures starts back up its day starts at 6 p.m like today's future started last night at 6 p.m right into today so that's that's friday friday was technically on thursday <laughs> so it doesn't do it that way so all it's going to show you in the futures is how many just how many days till it expires in general. So you have three days to expiration, four days to expiration, five days to expiration, six days to expiration, and so on. And Tanza usually plays within a week. I've been playing within a week to two weeks, depending on the move, because you can be, uh, I don't want to say a sign if we're buying, but your um. I'm trying to say your op because they expire, you can be, you know, you can you can lose all of that. So you need to make sure you sell your position before your options expire, or they're gonna they're gonna hold that money. And that's gonna be especially it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> because you gotta remember it's a hundred, it's options, a hundred of the underlying, which is futures. You don't want a hundred of, of the futures. <laughs> so like you're not gonna be able to do that. So you want to just ensure that you're out. So giving yourself a few more days just to and, you know, and here, let, let's, let, let's look at the price difference of buying more time so you can really see it because that also helps. So say we play within the week. So within the week, we'll be three to four days out, right? So we'll go four and we'll do a call, okay? This price going up. And all right, uh, we're looking at 13, 1356 buying power, right? To buy four days out. Now, let's go... Let's give it two weeks. Let's buy now two weeks out. November 14th. All right. Now we buy this call. Now we're at $2,700. So <laughs> I'm showing you the, the, the difference, Barbara, you know, so you can kind of help you figure out where you want to to trade it, you got to remember it's the future. So you don't have this pressure to be like, I got to get out of the trade by 4 p.m. You can hold it. And all you have to do is wait till 6 p.m. You have to wait from, because you can hold it because the future is going to stop at 5 p.m. And then come back on at 6. And it takes an hour break, right? 
So you could be like, okay, well, I'll just close the position once it opens back up, whatever the case may be. Um, buy more time if you feel like you really need it, but you, but if you, but you really don't, <laughs> like you just, you just don't need a lot of time because you, um, because you're going for a most likely a daily one to two day move anyway, right? And you want to be done with it. So I would buy more than more than two days, so you won't be up against a wall. But I won't worry about buying no two, three weeks, four weeks out on futures. It's not necessary. Unless you're trying to play the contract all the way to the new contract again. But that's the trader's choice. But you, you don't you don't need it. Not to make the move. Not how at least not how I trade. Um, because I'm am more of a day trader. So if you're gonna be in the market daily a bit, then you don't need all that time. A couple times a week. All right, so I need to get back in. I missed my trade. I didn't get to look at the chart. I don't like getting back in blind. So I just like to look at the chart first, which I think is a great skill. Um, but you know, I could have been back in and not missed that four dollars, but we're not gonna talk like that. We're just gonna focus or continuing it up because that's where it's going. <clears throat> All right, now who's in this with me? No problem, Barbara. Um, where are my people at that I know? Who am I looking for? Looking at that, I know needs to be in this trade. Who I want to pick on today? Maria, maybe? Marsha over there killing it. <laughs> Marsha came in two weeks ago, was like, made thousand dollars off futures. Thanks, Randy. I'm out. Love y'all. Have a good weekend. <laughs> I was like, congrats, Marsha. So I wouldn't be surprised if Marsha's are been in it the whole time. Uh, because she's starting, I, I love it. She's starting to get her confidence and her groove. She getting it. Love it, love it, love it. Making a thousand dollars in futures ain't like, you know, you have to be practicing that. It's not like just getting lucky. <laughs> um so yeah, see where it goes today. All right, so we're almost there. So let me put in now that my order took. Let me sell. Let me come out to the two hour. I kind of want to take a look at it. So I wonder. We got ten minutes till ten. Huh. I wonder if you. Is your are, target? The bottom of the weekly fair value gap is that what you were yeah. saying? Forty three eighty four. Yep. Uh, open because ain't nobody trying to risk it through there. I mean, if if we got if we get strong candlestick patterns for it on a smaller mm -hmm. time frame, means I'll jump in and take it. But from the larger time frame, I feel like that's the safest first target. Yeah. Well, so I was wondering, since this week has been a continuous like rocket ship up, um, a lot of times, like if the week has been like super one direction, sometimes on Friday, it achieves like some level and then it retraces some percentage back into the week. So I'm kind of looking honestly for the for the short. <laughs> okay. No, I I I I have the same sentiment. That's why I was hit. That's why I missed the morning run up. Cause I was like, you ain't trying to run all the way up. Like it's yeah. Friday. You gonna do some pump fake foolishness. <laughs> I'm gonna be mad. I agree. I totally agree yeah. with you. Oh, uh, I totally agree with you. I'm just trying to like that's when I'm like level by level. Like well, I see you coming up, but if you look at the daily and stuff, like you're like in. Ah, oh, you can come up to 40. Let's see. Because the weekly looks like this. Now you're coming up into like wick. Oh, this is so scary. <laughs> but I'm like, but I'm trusting my conviction. Like, you got to kiss that fair value gap. Like, you got to. You got to just tab it just one more time. You could totally yeah. miss it. But I'm eyeing it like a halt because I'm going I'm to run with my money if I do miss it. <laughs> Sweet. <clears throat> So who knows? I could probably take probably forty three eighty. Keep it short. Yeah, just like what I'm like hope, hoping or like if if I could like tell the market what to do, I'd love to see it like go up and kiss that fair value gap right before it's ten o'clock, and then the news is the thing that like triggers like crash. Dude, that's what I want to have it. That's what I'm looking for. But I'm gonna take the money on the way up and the way down, Maria. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not in anything just yet, but I'm I'm eyeballing. 
potential short. <laughs> I just need you to stick to the assignment for like nine more minutes. <laughs> it's crazy how also Maria, how we like, well, it's not crazy. We've been sitting here for how long now? Oh, this is almost two years. Uh-huh. Straight <laughs> with you by my side. <laughs> <April or Maria. laughs> Sorry. Time flies. Well, it's just the fact. Yeah, it really has. Like, I'm like, wow. Um, yeah. we started this. Mark, May, 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 mm -hmm. April, May of last year, y'all. And we've been staring at these crazy candles every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I love how we've gotten to the point where we're like, nah, it's Friday. We know exactly what you're about to do. <laughs> we know exactly how things line up with the news. You're going to do this. And then when the news hit, you're going to do that because it's going to hit the other algorithm. And but It's like once you find that flow, like you can't miss it's hard to miss like you we just have it takes it took us what the year i think earlier this year is when we finally started getting into like all these future um dynamics and understanding the algorithm thanks to maria that's when like loyal maria she gets her praise so i'm telling you maria this is your fault i'm trade for your <laughs> fault <laughs> i'll take i yourself. went to terry to trade options and i'm over here trading futures <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, who knew? Who knew? But yeah, like futures just opens up so much. And I've been, and I sometimes, I, I go back to options on futures sometimes because sometimes like I don't have the level of conviction that you have. So sometimes I'm like, I could just like do this, but like protect myself a bit. But it's nice because yeah, like never, like I don't even think about the PDT rule anymore. Like it just doesn't even matter. <laughs> I think it that's just, the beauty of it. I ain't got time for no PDT. I ain't got no time for these verticals trying to figure out if stuff going to come break through. Like, like, I am just so over it. <laughs> I think also... I, I haven't like, traded a vertical since, like, the beginning of the year. I think also, um, uh, at least for me, like, psychologically, I'm not as scared to take, like, a loss and like get stopped out because I'm like, well, I can always just get back in if I mm -hmm. feel like I got a handle on like what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, versus with the PDT, you're like, oh, all three of my trades this week really need to be winners. Otherwise, like that sucks for me. <laughs> yeah, I still have both my accounts. I have a margin, Thanks. but the margin is now my futures account. And then my mm -hmm. cash account is for when because because I'm playing the future so heavily and consistently, it's kind of mm -hmm. like you should eventually get to a place where you know when to take spy and when you can hold spy. Yeah. Right. So I use my cash account for that to trade spy with my futures. <laughs> and even if I only take a quick spy scalp for like the Globex gap. I'll just do that and be out and just be done with spy. Like I don't even, because it's cash account. So it's like, just take that profit, fine. And then if the pattern uh, on the future shows that I can hold it, then I'll hold it to the next day and make even more money on spy. But if you trade mm -hmm. in future, I mean, you sh should be able to trade spy. Yeah. Alongside with it, to just double up that way. But always be wary of your expiration dates with spy. You gotta go in all that. And if the gap oh, yeah. if you don't think ES, if you think ES is gonna gap down on you overnight, I don't enter spy. <laughs> so I'm just like, you know, if just get comfortable trading futures and it'll become a lot easier to trade spy. Like I should have took spy this morning too, take my two dollars. So I should be looking for two dollars on spy. If you can scalp two dollars with spy and then you start to scale your contract size with that, oh, easy money. <laughs> I mean, if you can hold it all day, great. Like yesterday, it's fine. You know, we did the damn thing, so great. But I mean, spy two dollars in the money. Always play in the money with spy. That's my kind of my rule for spy. I don't other tickers I can risk playing out of the money like Adobe because Adobe like really move. But I, my rule don't play spy out of the money. Just go in the money. Just either use less time if you have to save capital. But try to be in the money or at the money um, with SPY. 
is just yield better profits and then you could just be done with it and you won't have to sit in it as long. I'm going to go with Jessenia's recommendation and get out at 4380. Because Jessenia is another trader over there being modest with herself. She act like she ain't got special sauce with the candlestick reading. And Jessenia is pretty right because Jessenia beat me on that Oracle trade. She was like, no, I think it's going to get in lower. And I was like, no, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to get in now. And then sure enough, Jessenia was right on that one. She got in like $3 lower than all the rest of it. I was like, damn you, Jessenia. <laughs> so like, we're all looking at the same candlesticks, yes. But we all kind of interpret them different on their strength and what they can do. And this is why I love this group because... She helps me on my strength. I help y'all, you know, I'll give y'all the gas to kind of give you the fundamentals to figure it out. And then you start to put together how you see it. And then we start to talk about it. And then, so just send me a drop that 4380. I'm going to get out there. Uh, ooh, a clay base for your birthday. Happy birthday. Um, No worries. You don't have to focus on your birthday. Focus on time with your daughter. That's fine. Y'all in New Orleans? That's so much fun. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, we're not in New Orleans. I thought, oh, she moved back home in July. Oh. We're in Georgia. Okay. So she stopped going to Xavier? Yeah. Nope. She's not at Xavier. Yeah, she's going to Georgia State now. Okay. Yeah, girl. <laughs> I died. And look, <laughs> everything that you've been went through with this girl the past year. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to try uh, next week. I'm going to just try to trade when I'm, because I'm going to be on a cruise, but I'll be in Mexico a couple of days. Okay. So I saw the days that you're going to be on. I like the fact that you're changing days around. That works. Yes. And I'll bring but yeah, I made a little money today. I still got to make another hundred. Okay. Yeah. I got to make $150 to meet my target. Cool. Oh, somebody's writing mm -hmm. QQQ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. She, she not in the room. Jean writing QQQ. Yeah, Jean writing QQQ this morning. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. Yeah. Come on, okay. Come on, y'all. Okay, you guys have a good day. Have a good one, Cam. All right. So yes, changes, housekeeping stuff. Since we're waiting on this, yeah, two minutes. Like, if you won't pop up here, if you don't give me this two dollars, and see, now I'm starting to leave. This one, like, it's starting to lose gas. Cause we're coming up on a minute. So I don't know if you're gonna give me that four dollars or not. And if you do, you may wick it too fast where I may not get out. And my other rule of thumb is always play the whole numbers and not the cents. Okay. So if it's 4380, 50 cents, just play put your order at 4380. I'm telling you, not getting your order filled is the most frustrating feeling in the world to not be filled 50 cents away. But that is so <laughs> so frustrating oh it's like so close because you you got the move right you just couldn't take money because it just didn't kiss it exactly it's like man don't worry about them cents y'all just take the whole dollar it's just easier um so you're gonna, oh, question real quick you're gonna get out at 4380 and then are you gonna hop back in to short it if it shorts yes okay gotcha because based on this pattern i don't know if it's gonna short I don't, I don't like I have to see where there's my order fail sometimes depending on where to uh like how so I can see a retrace in these two fair value gas but I don't know about this lower one I have to see because of the space between the two on 15 minutes don't look at the five minutes to try to predict this because you're gonna be all over the, place. the 15 minute so see it's almost up there to 384 it's so sure it's 10 o'clock so what the 10 o'clock you say anybody got it open Uh, see how I didn't come through, but this is why I listen to Jacinia. Thank you, Jacinia, for saving my trade. <laughs> You're welcome. I saw that level too, though. I did. That's why I marked it. I just wasn't gonna take the order. I was like, nah, it'll come up there. But but let me let me not overshoot. Once I saw it, it was your comment was staring me in the face, Jacinia, like like a sign of like, now you know you tend to overshoot like a dollar too. You better take Jacinia's target. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So we have ISM services PMI coming in lower than forecasted. So ready to short. So 
So on a two hour, this looks like a great short, but we have to dissect this candle here. Uh, so this is great because this is right on the fair value and it didn't even, it missed it. So I, now I know it's going to fall potentially because it's, oh my God. You just know how you do. You got to pull back some. So let's see. Patience pays. I can see at least these two, like easily these two. This is a green line. Um, 43.63 short. Is it a true reversal right here though? That's the thing. When I was looking at it on five minute, it just doesn't look like it wants to turn. I need a I need something else. <laughs> like like turning my head helps. Uh I just need something else to tell me it's really coming down. Um 12 minutes left. This is where sometimes I can hesitate. Get in. So let's see. If we come through, let's see the five minute one. We got the five minute close at forty three sixty four. We could bounce off of it forty three sixty nine. There's a three minute little line. Is there any signal this is gonna come down? This line is long as wick. So we come down. We'll test this forty three sixty nine. So forty three sixty nine sounds like a good. Short term, short five dollars. If that's your thing, the jig that you want to go for, will it go for the second one? I don't know because it's on the three minute. Let's see. Okay, so the five minute takes both, but then on the 15 minute, it's like one and it will have to come through into this one. So, how long do you think you want to short, Maria? <laughs> like, where's your target? You think it's look because it doesn't always have to come back down to the uh block in May though this time right well so her her something that ICT has talked about which I haven't really been following his teachings much I kind of like have slightly moved on but some of the stuff that I feel like he's taught about um holds true and I uh, do pay attention to it one of the things he talked about was on a Friday the weekly candle will extend either to the upside or the downside <clears throat> and then it will retrace about 20 to 30 percent back into the week mm -hmm. and i don't remember if i don't remember if um if it's on the the monday through thursday candles or if it's the like highest point on friday before it retraces but uh, depending on where you look, if you put a fib on uh, Monday through Thursday, 20% back down would be 4298.2. And I'm doing it on the bodies and the candles. What time frame are you starting to draw your fib? Uh, on, on the daily. <clears throat> on the I daily do I do to be yeah serious. so I did zero percent at the top of the body on Thursday candle so yesterday's candle and so you, then you're the, drawing it going up so you're starting is that yeah I always forget I just mix on what Monday you started on Monday's candle mm -hmm. and then you did a fair to Thursday's candle like this yeah here to here yeah okay so i'm gonna tell you why i don't like that but go ahead <laughs> well, I, was, I was gonna say yeah so i'm not sure um or maybe i should be drawing it up to the high point of today's candle um, no so i think the best way to draw fibonacci is to come to the two hour not the daily is fine but we day trade more than anything Maria, so like if you come to the two hour and you take the most like the actual peak, like high to low, like the actual turnaround, it's it's a better, it's it's just more accurate because what you had the way you're drawing it, you're drawing it into what's being still drawn. So you don't really have a true high. 
because that's just where price stopped on Thursday, but that's not like a true swing high where price is right, like right. stopped at a level. So the best way to draw Fibonacci's is from like a true reversal to reversal. Mm. And that's gonna give you your better right. So watch this. If I come to the two hour, um, and I know I got my lines, y'all just bear with me, see if y'all can see this. So we so let's do a comparison. Let me do, let me just go back. Let's draw Maria's way first just to show the difference. So you see how it looks like you will retrace your 50% because 50% is always like the golden ticket of where your retracement is going to guarantee come to. It would have to come back through all these candles and- Yeah, like, not look. not 50, uh, like 20%. I'm Got looking but 20%. Just yeah. looking at it, it's just like, okay, yes, it can come down here, but you're at the zero. Like it doesn't give you- great levels to me versus if I flipped it when I come because I'm always dissecting it from a tall smaller time frame and to me this is not going to give me the best retracement down it'll come back a little bit into this candle but then I don't have another Fibonacci level without it breaking through the order block it just formed from this morning to come down to the 23 so if I draw it this way it takes you know just if I draw it from back here and I take it from the two hour and I go like highest wick that price price still coming up to, to the lowest one, then my Fibonacci looks like this. And then my Fibonacci is coming up through the 1% to finish out this order block while it can re still retrace down to the 78, then retrace down back to the 68 in my 68 now, or 61, sorry, I keep looking at that eight on the end that makes me say that. Um, my 61% right, is now more in alignment with the order block that it just made, which makes more sense, right? Because you want your, the levels to line up to the candlesticks accordingly. And if they kind of don't, then that's your clue that you could have drew it incorrectly or pulled from the wrong highs or the wrong lows. And I find this stronger because then I know if it breaks here, we pull around here, then we're going to come down to the 50. And then I have a guarantee. And then this 50 is also aligned with this block. So it gives me more guaranteed levels to see where price is going because it's also aligning with my order blocks. To me, it's stronger if you can get it to line up with order blocks and fair value gas. Right. right. So then your 20%, which will still be correct, but you can see now from this view though, we're still coming back down into here uh, for that 20% pullback like you were talking about just to revisit where we kind of like broke off this morning, fine. And then, um, and this is from the two hour perspective, that's like the lowest it will go before continuing to finish this order block up here, which I do think it needs to do, which is why I knew today would be a hard, like a slower trading day and not give you as big of moves that you're gonna have to trade like up and down if you're trying to make your goal because once it gets to the order block, like the biggest one, all these were smaller in comparison to this large one up at the top. Um, it like it just it just runs out of steam. So it needs to come through here, but it's also gonna like pull back, get some more buyers so it can push up through and come to the other side. Now it doesn't have to, it could totally if we're on a bear run still and we're trying to come down. This is as far as we could go. And then we could start turning back around and make new lows and continue on a downward trend. So I don't, I, that's just the moment of truth that I'm at now <laughs> where like, are you, are we breaking this or, or what? And next week news. So this will leave segue into my, uh, for the members and the fair of you guys receive an email from me on this change. So you know what's coming. But for everybody new, the Traders Crib is now aligning their trading call schedule with these red folders in Forex Factory. Um, I think it's just better for not just my schedule, but everybody as far as kind of getting into a discipline on when to focus on trading and when not to uh, just stay out the market. It's not saying that a date with no red folder can't yield a large move. It just kind of helps you prioritize. Um so we have daylight saving times this weekend. We have no, you know, Sunday school charting this, this Sunday. But um, moving into next week, we only have two red folders. So we have Thursday and Friday red folders towards the end of the week, right? 
um, with unemployment claims and then just like the preliminary, you know, consumer sentiment from University of Michigan. And the beginning of the week is kind of quiet, you know, not even an orange folder in here. So I don't know if this is enough, you know, for me, this is not a lot of information that gives me this like underlying sentiment that I have enough volatility to blow through that, that order block that we just looked at. I feel like mm, you may want to test around it. You may pull back. You may do a little something, something. But like, are you really going to be able to make it through here, or are you gonna? I I, I expect Monday to be like a uh uh kind of like a slight little pullback candle or something like that, like in here, consolidation decision something. Like I can totally see that Monday. We just got up here um before continuing either in here or just coming all the way back down um but yeah i see this is how now from the daily this is how my fibonacci looks so it's coming from this high to this low a true reversal and we're still coming up to finish this off and if we were to retrace or do some type of stairway up this is what it would look like and we decided to blow through the 50 that's why when it came up here i was like okay cool and when it just continued to blow i was like all right well we're just gonna go straight through it which it does a lot too i love it when i see the fibonacci just kind of run through the whole from the 23 like all the way up to 78 or vice versa depending on the direction um and like one swoop <laughs> it does that quite a bit too so you just have to line it up right and go from there now with this retracement back down we have just crossed the 78 percent so this is perfect this is where price would most likely retrace back down as well so we came right up in it we just missed the kit this is why i say what i say man but i'm thank you again thank you just anyway um uh, about this missing the order so this is why i took we took the two hour so what level we said was probably more guaranteed was right here price was coming up through this wick already and the top of this body my top bodies are always great points and that's right before price was all up in this chop so that that breakout this is it and that's that 4380 price pretty much stopped there uh, yeah it went up a little bit more but that was it so now we can run all the way back down through here this one is weak, so I would think it could do it, but it's just a matter of when. Um, my other concern is I don't want to jump in this too quickly because it doesn't have to retrace as deep as you may think. So with the 15 minute, it can literally just retrace this 15 minute fair value gap, stop, which would be right on the other side of the 78. And it can float on the 78, right? It can just come a little bit further down below it, a little bit further up above it, but not really move in a direction where it's coming down towards the 61 and we're not really moving in a direction where it's fully coming up towards the 1% the or 100%, sorry. So um, just keep that in mind because that happens at every level of Fibonacci, right? The, six, the 38, look what it did. It came up. And it came down, then it had to come back up through it before it could continue on. The 50, it stalled. Came Finally came up to the next level. Right at the next level, it stalled, okay? And then was doing this crazy crap all night. But either way, it stalled at the level. And then now it finally broke up to the next level. And now stall. Like, it. that's how you want Fibonacci to go. You want Fibonacci to kind of be taking a breath at every level because then you knew you drew it right. So now the question is, do we fall or do we just float and then continue up? Which I think is going to be a float and continue up, but it may be very small moves. It's going to be kind of difficult to trade. Uh, you're going to be scalping quick because I really don't, like as much as I want to short this, Maria, I don't want to take profit just like right here. <clears throat> if you could have been short in here, that would have been a nice move, obviously, but I like my confirmation candles, so sometimes I don't trade it but that would have you know you could have been if you were that aggressive and took the risk you could have got that uh here's what it looks like on a five minute so it would have been perfect because there's your pin coming down and now but my my issue is this order block here and I want to know are you going to break through it or are you just going to like stop right here and that's another reason why I'm not in and this is on the retracements I can hesitate that's just honest to god I can't say so like do you really want to pull back or, or are you just 
like feeling a short term, which this to me would be the short term fair value gap on a five minute, and you're not really trying to go further down because you don't have to. So I, <clears throat> this is where my smaller time frames really help me out. So if price breaks below here and I can get in the, into the larger now, oh, let me back up. Let's look at this. So we got, we do have some wick left in this 15 minute one. But will you want to come back for it in some way? Because you left a lot of wicks all last, all this week. You used to like, no. And what I also am recognizing is depending on how far it leaves a wick, uh, it may take longer to come back. But it, I think this is really due with the volatile news this week and just how much red folders we had and just kept running up. Um, so, yeah, see this? This doesn't make me feel good. Now, now what can also happen is we can get an M forming here on the fair five minute. And that will be more of a conviction that it may have more strength to come down further if it gives us an M because then it'll have the strength to potentially break this order block here, but um, I don't know. <laughs> you just gotta wait till it happens. So I probably won't look for my next move until closer to eleven. <clears throat> um, we pretty much made it there, and the most of the move was really early this morning. So. <laughs> we just kind of see how the rest of the market goes the rest of the day. Um, volume starts to fizzle out. Momentum all that starts to fizzle out. So it's kind of hard to tell. It's Friday, y'all. It's Friday. But yes. So made some money today. Congratulations to anybody who did take this little run up. This would have been perfect. You just be done for today. Um. I'll pick it back up in the Telegram chat this afternoon to let you guys know what I did this afternoon if, if I choose to do anything, because again, it is Friday. Uh, so we'll see. Because I'm I'm nervous that price is not really going to break up or break down. And oh, God, it's just going to suck. Ah, well, it is what it is. So I'm going to send an alert. If it breaks down on the bottom here, I can kind of get an idea and check what to do. And then if it comes for the weekly fair value gap and break up above it, then I potentially have, let's see, it was two hour. I think I pulled this, I, this is the tweezer top. So the tweezer top on the two hour, the first one, because this is a head and shoulders, right? Kind of wonky, but it is one. Um, a 43.98, if it wants to wick in there a little bit, on a run move, just please have your order set because what Maria said is true. It will just wick in here and then pull back with some vengeance later. And you wanna be out of the way for that move. Other than that, uh, any other questions? We can look at some other tickers today, of course. We still have time on this call. But as far as futures go and the futures trading that we've done thus far and the news around it, um, we can move on. I don't have anything else. All right. So actually, let's let's, let's take a look at what Spy was doing this whole time. All right. So Spy came up right as well, but it's pulling back too as it's coming into its peak. I mean, this peak is so like strong, like this. <laughs> This run up and I'm just like it's just a hard read um on how you want to blow through this or not but I can see Monday coming up here possibly filling this gap if it doesn't want to leave too many gaps before taking off to the top as well um and then look at spy on the weekly so it's going back into the weekly fair value gap and this is where things get tricky because I want for the life of me to believe that next week we'll close this. But the larger the time frame, the theory on the candle, the candle sticks into the fair value gaps becomes a longer wait of <laughs> when it when it's actually gonna happen. And so I mean you're so in there. So it really just depends on how it closes for the end of the day. If it closes like 
majority still in that fair value gap or out of it. So we'll see how SPY goes um, into next week. I'm not going to position myself over the weekend. And then we have Amazon. We'll check and just kind of scroll through tickers and take a look. So Amazon was running up quite nicely this week as well. Um, today is kind of, today and yesterday is kind of stalling. We had this big gap, so that was great. Um, it does have another gap that it needs to finish out completely with another gap all the way up here. So if it keeps running up, then, you know, that's actually not a bad trade if Amazon wants to just keep coming up. Okay, so I was doing some candlestick. Right? Just be, I want to point this out while it's here on the chart. For those of you who bought these candlestick cards, uh, there is a a chart pattern as today is focuses on the overall chart patterns. And I was just like, a man came up with these cards. It's just obvious. I'm sorry, but it's just true. Uh, because of where'd that pattern go that I want to show you guys. For those of you who have the deck, they're called they're double tops and double bottoms. So that's basically what kind if you really look hard, you see the W, right? But now we're getting a little a little fancy and we're further differentiating them with other candlesticks within the double top or double bottom, right? And these differentiations are going to be called Adam and Eve. Bruh, let me, okay, can y'all, <laughs> if, let me, hold on, where's the Adam and Eve? Okay, all right, so this is, this is like a double, a double bottom-ish pattern here. We don't know about like two double, but anyway, it's double bottom. The fact that this candle right here that was formed, we're, at, we're on Amazon right now. We're looking at Wednesday, October 25th candle. This long candle like protruding down here. And you see how the other leg of the W kind of, it doesn't have this like striking point. It has this kind of like flat, y'all feel where I'm going with this? Cause I didn't name it Adam and Eve, okay? I didn't name it Adam and Eve. But this is considered an Adam and Eve, this being the Eve, this being the Adam. <laughs> I can't with this, this low-key, borderline, perverted stock market that we trade. But I digress. That's what it is. All right. Adam and Eve, <laughs> double tops, double bottoms. And um, oh my God, it made me chuckle. I was like, who came up with these names, man? So in this case, this, based on this card, okay, this is like a true, like this is the exact pattern that's showing up right now, all right, in Amazon. <laughs> Man, that's what, like y'all here, right? Like, come on. All right, so that's the exact pattern. It's called Double, Double Bottom Adam and Eve, okay? And it's green, so it's bullish. It has a stronger bullish sentiment. So if we can have faith in this, you know, reference card, then this would be continuing up and we could, you know, I don't know if you want to swing, swing Amazon or whatever, but you know, that's an option. That's all I'm trying to get at based on this clear Adam and Eve. I can't, I can't. Anyway, I'll let y'all take that with y'all for this weekend. <laughs> so Apple, Apple has been making lower lows uh, overall. So I don't know if it really wants to come up just yet. It's finally filled this large gap, though, so it could potentially finally be in some type of turnaround, but I am not convinced just yet where price really wants to go with Apple. Apple just looks like it stared its way up, and now it's staring its way down, and the flat level of Apple is all the way down here uh, where it kind of like plateaus and flats is at 154. So if Apple gets down all the way back down to 154, I will buy a ton of shares <laughs> with no problem. Um, but that's the area that I'm thinking I may just stare down to. Uh, is there another level little gap or something that can hold the price up? I don't know. This is a stronger block. As long as we want a bearish sentiment, I think it will just keep coming down. <clears throat> but we'll see how. We'll just see. Time will tell. Nvidia it's going back up so I should have bought it back here and I just didn't I got distracted so we're going up 
another Adam and Eve ish looking <laughs> W. But um, so that should we should be going up to finish this gap or clear out this abandoned baby, right? We need to finish this abandoned baby off. So I think Nvidia can do that. Uh, we have quite a like ten dollar move in it finishing off the abandoned baby, so that's really nice. Um, and then who knows if it's gonna again come down and continue down and make new lows because this part of the W is lower than the previous one. I can expect it wanting to come down. We got to kind of, there's, here's the head, here are the shoulders. We're coming down. <clears throat> there's just the neckline. We need to break it in order to keep coming down. If we don't break it, then we're not going to come down. It's just going to be a failed attempt. But this is that area, the 394, 390. This is the area that we want price to break. Um, and I'll reset my alert. All right, for NVIDIA. And then Lily... Eli Lily Company um, slowly finishing its gap. Nice price come down. Slowly finishing its gap here. Kind of got stopped out by this candle that was created on October 30th. Um, it has somewhere left to finish, but it may not want to, just because it is a bearish gap. Not sure. Lily is a little bit of a rebel of the market with its own pharmaceutical plan. So it's not really doing the same downward trend that the rest of the market is doing. It's actually been making slight upward pulls. I do think that overall, Lily would like to come back up. It did run up pretty high, but looking from the weekly, we do kind of have an M here. So we're going to see how much it wants to potentially fall with the rest of the market. But um, I do expect like these lower levels of support to really come in and hold price up without a problem so we'll see okay kind of rechart 936 area <clears throat> see what it does from there and then our precious little mirror one company is just falling finally turning but fell quite a bit just kind of leave that there for today. There's not much to talk about it. Adobe. Um, all right. So some of y'all know I got bacon from saying big ass candle on chart. So what are we gonna come up with for big ass W on the chart? <laughs> like it's just like what is this? Um, so we have like this cradle shape that kind of fell, came back down. We hit this level again. Is it like an inverted head and shoulders? Is that what I'm seeing? Like this is the head and this is the shoulders. I see I'm flipping there. Y'all know you could flip this chart. Oh, I got to find the button again to show y'all that. Uh, just, I did it accidentally one time and I didn't want to ever do it again. But you can inverse your chart. If you're more confident of looking at candlesticks one way, you can quickly hit an inverse so you can just flip it and you'd be like, oh, and then just flip it back. If, if, like if your brain is better at seeing only up, then you should use that feature. <laughs> if your um so anyway, so it's looking little head and shoulders ish inverted. So price could be finally we have this humongous where is that gap right up here is fat gap that's starting at five seventy eight that doesn't close until I don't I don't even know how to read this gap because it's okay one candle to here that's one gap then here next day okay so it did like an engulfing and then dropped again okay so boom 6.15 so I don't know when we're gonna come and fill this gap 6.15 6.14 but it does look like from the chart to me that Adobe is trying like uh boy it wants to it wants to so bad and I think it finally may be ready because we were trying to up, 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 not yet, up, 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 not yet. And like the lows are getting a little higher here. This level of support at 490 has been looking great. I finally think I could trade, trade Adobe again. It finally looks like you're finally out of this ridiculous range that I hated trading you in. So yeah, let's send an alert at the 573. and see what happens and I'll get in there and when I trade Adobe I trade very conservatively I just wait for the break because Adobe playing so I because uh, once it breaks it's usually like it's a go so I'll wait for the break and then yeah just I don't know how much time at least a month maybe 
if I can afford a month, at least two weeks, always at least two weeks with Adobe. But, um, oh my God, I would love for you to take this dog on gap. Like, please, please. <laughs> Just come through it, and then you're okay. So this is that weekly. You kind of whipped in there already, so you got to come back, and then this is closing this weekly fair value. Yeah, will be at the six o five, so we can actually move this. I know my colors are off today. I'm not doing my just kind of giving you the gist of the candles today. <clears throat> oh my, I like to keep the uh, resistance red and the uh, support green, but I want to. Keep it short and simple. So there we have this chart like this. So it looks like it, you know, stalled through here. Come on, you can just pop up through there just a little bit. It'd be great. Oh boy, Adobe. All right, here's Oracle. Oracle ran running back up with vengeance now today. Um, came down, was giving me a scare. Wasn't sure how far down I wanted to come. Just kind of was waiting on this move right here. This is a weekly. But waiting on it to show me like some true conviction is trying to come back up. So I could buy back in. <clears throat> we just closed this gap. I could have been running this whole time, but I wasn't paying attention to it. I was more futures focused this week. No problem. Some weeks I got more stocks than others. But overall, um, we dipped down into this like lower fair value gap here. Did we close it all the way? We didn't close it all the way. It came pretty close. And now we're running back up here to the gap. And then uh, <clears throat> this chart looks so crazy right now. I want you so badly to come all the way, all the way back up. But this little M hat is making me feel like you're pulling back up in this area and then you're going to want to fall back down into this 96 territory. That's what I feel like. So we'll see if it wants to do that or not. <clears throat> but this is like where it plateaus at so I'm just I'm curious I'm curious I'm just gonna keep watching it for now and I will put an alert at like I guess 111 because right now I'm not so eager to get it in at the bottom like I was before I just want to ensure that it keeps the damn trend for a little bit longer than what it did the first time we tried to tackle Oracle right y'all remember that I was like I was a little more short-lived than what I thought it was gonna be I thought we was gonna hold that a little longer and then in like three days we were all running out with our money um but hey that's the market any other tickers you guys want to bring up for today's call and kind of go over anything else you guys are trading if not and I can just skim a bunch of them but it's Friday, so I don't want to waste time that's not needed. I hope you guys got everything that you guys needed out of me today. This is the time for any questions. Um, and I'll let y'all have a good weekend. We can wrap this thing up. 1030 today. Trade safe the afternoon if you're going to trade it. But this is, like I said, I'm just going through the charts as I'm talking. So you guys can kind of see what everything's doing. Boeing finally looks like you can maybe trade it, Maria. <laughs> this actually looks like there's a legit move in Boeing. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> I, I get different you. Different stocks. I mean, I think you're right, but yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Fears. Yeah, the future just, it's just the, the, the fact that I have all day, all night, you know, it makes it a little easier to have enough information to trade it with stronger conviction. Um, but yeah, Boeing is Boeing's funny. Um Bopart still not giving me good trades. Some of these tickers can really just get stuck for like months at a time. And I'd much rather be trading the futures stuck for months at a time and not these other companies because the companies tend to do wonky other stuff that's kind of unpredictable without some additional fundamentals. EMPH has been on a crazy drop. It's crazy. <clears throat> oh, I forgot the Google Gap for Gap people. Adobe Gap looks like it's coming, warming up. Google Gap, Oracle ish. So, Oracle, Google, Adobe. Just to throw those out there and write those down so I can recap this call. Um, 
Google. I don't know how people have got trades. And the Oracle is kind of coming back up, but it has a big gap too. Um, so yeah. Cool. All right, y'all. So here's that pullback back down into the itself, as you guys can see clearly. It's retracing, coming back across the 50. I mean, that's not the 50. I'm so used to saying it. 78, like it's supposed to. That's when my alert went off. So there it goes. And we could probably really ride it down. Look at this 15 minute pattern. <clears throat> and I, based on the pattern that it's through, uh, it may not come all the way back down here to the 61, but I do think we can put some faith in the two, hour, the 15 minute, excuse me, 15 minute fair value gap. Yeah, between the 15 minute and the two hour fair value gap. It may not come all the way to the 68, because you got to remember this order block is sitting right here in the way. But you have a bit of a retracement down into this fair value gap. All right. So y'all trade safe. That's the final recaps. Y'all have a blessed weekend and I will see my lovely faithful subscribe members on Monday. Um, not Monday on Thursday, excuse me. I'm saying Monday because I'm so used to our Monday through Wednesday schedule, but we won't be back till Thursday on the live trade at all. Uh, we'll be in the telegram. We're obviously chatting it up, but we are officially starting this new schedule. So I will see you guys Thursday for our next red folder. All right. Sorry, y'all. All new changes for me, like these last few months. Y'all take care. Bye.